how advanced does this advanced course get? Well, there's a lot in it, that's for sure. We'll be doing a lot of formula work. We'll be doing a lot of clever multi-interacting formula work. We have here, for example, a lookup formula that takes its information from this table over here, using that value there, and feeds the value into here, and that's done for the whole sheet. And that's using VLOOKUP. We actually use HLOOKUP and we use two VLOOKUPs in the same formula. And not to forget, we also look at how we can deal with perhaps some missing data here, which causes NA all the way across. But we see how to resolve that. We then look at outlining, how to set outlining up and control that outlining. Outlining is here as an example where you can expand and contract rows and columns to display more or less data, based really around the fact that you have some subtotaling going on in your file. Activating outlining, you'll find, is pretty straightforward, and controlling it is straightforward and easy to do. We examine sparklines in some detail. Sparklines are new to 2010 and are these little mini graphs that you get at the end of lines as we have here. Three different types, lines, columns, and win loss. We examine how to customize them, add them, delete them. We're gonna look at many of the formulas for manipulating text. In this example here, we are using the mid function to find part of a string based on criteria to tell us where to start from and a criteria to tell us where to end at. As well as formulas to manipulate strings, we'll be using the if formula and taking it a little bit further than perhaps you have done previously. In this example here, we're using if, but within the logical test, we're using and and not together to act really as double and triple if scenarios for you to be able to answer more than one criteria to then carry out your instruction. We'll also be examining scenarios, the ability for you to store different sets of values for the same cell and swap between those values, and then use scenarios with Solver so you can actually ask Excel to try out different solutions for you. Here we have the scenario manager with a few solutions, and we can just double click to place the new values into our sheet, double click, new values in the sheet, double click, new values in the sheet. So we look at how you can create those values, store those values, and then make use of those values either through physically typing in each scenario or asking Solver to create each scenario. We'll be looking at pivot tables, a massive part really of Excel, using pivot tables to summarize and interrogate your data. Here we have a fairly simple pivot table that summarizes data by row, by month, or by some row and column information so that you can see summarized data based on a couple of criteria. And we'll look at how to manage these pivot tables. We'll look at how to connect a pivot table to an external data source. The data does not have to be in Excel. And we look at things like being able to drill down into the data. This 2080 here for Ben on Wednesday in August, if we drill down, we see where that data has been extracted from. We take the formula idea that bit further, and you can use formulas to create dynamic named ranges. They've probably created named ranges in the past. We take that one step further, and create a formula as we have here to create a dynamic name range. So if the range actually increases in size, that's not a problem. The named area will effectively increase with it. And therefore any formulas or pivot tables you've based on that named range will now use the enlarged data size. We examine arrays, we use arrays. You may have come across array formulas in a previous life or in other people's sheets. They are highlighted and given away by these little curly brackets that appear. But you can see that when you actually enter the formula there, the curly brackets disappear. So it's how to get those back and what an array is really so that you get them to work properly. And our little squiggly brackets then come back. Random number generation, that's a possibility in Excel, but not just random number generation, the use of the random number function to actually randomly select data from a list. We have here, it's picking out from this list a random customer ID. If we then recalculate that field, you see it picks out a different customer. And that's totally random selection from this list. So if you need to be able to pick out from a list at random, perhaps you're doing mystery shopper or you're doing surveys and you want to randomly select, then that can be done using a couple of functions in Excel. Well, hopefully that's given you a flavor for what you're likely to cover here in this title. And it will take you all the way through to the last chapter that covers automating tasks with Excel using macros. So everything that you do during the title, to do with formulas, to do with data in pivot tables, to do with spark lines, to do with arrays, will all lead you to the point of being able to make Excel even more productive than it already is, given the tools that it gives you. Enjoy.